You talked a little bit about uh, DHS working on robust procedure, amendment procedures, mm -hmm. you called it. And I know in the context of the watch list, which are, it's not a data mining program, um, there's this TRIP program, which well, we've criticized and others have too. But mm -hmm. in the context of a data mining program like the ATS that you mentioned, mm -hmm. What kinds of redress procedures might there be in place or in development that you can tell us about so that if someone felt they were improperly targeted, they could rectify that? Um, sure. And the, with, regard to, um, uh, with regard to data mining and ATS, to the extent that um, someone is, uh, feels that they've been singled out or they've been delayed or somehow influenced in terms associated with this pattern-based analysis I described earlier. Um, they have, uh, right now, a variety of different options. One is TRIP, which I think is an improving process. I appreciate your comments on it, and the Inspector General's as well. It's, it, is a, it is a program intended to be a kind of one-stop shop in terms of any travel-related inquiries that you have. Um, and I think what's useful about it is, is you think that it's, I'm being stopped because I am an Irish woman. And indeed, you're being stopped because we think you're a money launderer, right? So you think there's some sort of nefarious uh, civil liberties activity going on or something associated with my travel, um, for example. Um, and indeed, there's some other element. And so we go to Treasury and say, hey, by the way, this money launderer, the purported money launderer, has asked, has asked about looking into redress. Should we still keep a watch out for her? And she goes and says, no, actually, that's from you know 1998. Let's clear that out. Let's close that up. So um, y you. Um, uh, don't necessarily need to know it's that that you need to know that the the travel issues are are resolved um, but so for for ATS sorry I was got a little detour with trip back to back to ATS uh, the automated targeting system so you could go through ATS if you didn't know it was associated with ATS um, if you uh, uh, suspect or, or are concerned it's going through ATS you can go either through Customs and Border Protection or to my office to try to to seek some resolution on it um, the amendment process some resolution on it um, the amendment processes that I discussed are both in terms of um, uh, modifying records, but also addressing the underlying concerns. Um, they are not yet finished. I mean, they're not through clearance. So I think that that is uh, what I can say on that. I wanted to, to circle back on two things that, that um, uh, Chris had talked about, um, actually, which is, it's interesting because he said, you know, he has, uh, you know, he's coming from the private sector, 25 years at IBM, and he said, well, in the private sector, uh, companies have scopes and limitations, and they, they, they try to only collect what information they have. It's really interesting, because I found, as an outside counsel, my clients wanted to collect everything and hold on to everything they could. And they weren't hemmed in by the Privacy Act, and, you know, what's your authority to collect it? I have much more leverage in terms of defining the fields that can be collected and even the uses of the information. Now, because I've got the Privacy Act and associated related um, acts than I do in, in kind of a, a self-regulatory regime on the private sector. So I was a little, there, there's got to be some sort of self-governing mechanism on, on a company side, but I'm not sure that they have a, a regulatory framework um, as clearly defined on, on, the, on the public sector side, in, in, in my opinion. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to say, which I had meant to say in my comments, which is on the, the definition of data mining. I talked about how there were, you know, you guys have one definition. There is indeed the um, current uh, uh, legal definition for the U.S. government to, to define. Um, I'm not commenting or criticizing or, <laughs> or taking any position on the report itself, but my... Um, my reservation would be to be concerned about expanding a definition of data mining to be so broad as to encompass all activities, such that it's an unproductive dialogue to go and say, okay, disclose or do analysis every time you, you essentially set up a database. And so I think we need to be cautious about how to address just general uses and processing of information as opposed to the linked-based and or pattern-based analyses, which we were talking about. Can I also circle back on an interesting issue that came up? Do you go want to ahead. go to that now? You can, you can do off? that before I take ask my question. Go ahead. I was, I was, because I was really interested, not that I'm picking on Mary Ellen, but I always pick on Mary Ellen. always does. I was interested by part of, part of your opening uh, discussion because, and I, and I guess, you know, life is about trade-offs and I need to spend less time on other stuff and more time on ATS, obviously. <laughs> but, uh, but I want to discuss the, some interesting differences between 
what we're calling predictive or pattern-based data mining and the use of anomaly. So, so pattern-based data mining in general, I think, refers to having experience with data points leading to something else. I talked about the $5 gas purchase and the $3,000 TV purchase. Experience shows that, that that pattern tends to indicate that there is criminal behavior afoot. Anomaly is when you take the entire sweep of normal behavior and, and just look for outliers. Just look for stuff that doesn't fit the pattern that you've established. And I think that's a very different use of data. It's not always going to be wrong, but it is, it is a bit of an invitation to look into more things than you otherwise would look into. And so there would be more privacy and civil liberties risks in scoping normal behavior and then, and then uh, looking for anomaly. I'll tell a brief, a brief story that I think is really entertaining. You all will have to suffer through it. Several years ago, I was walking on the mall with a friend. <laughs> And it was Christmas time, 50 states have their Christmas trees up, and there was a huge pit in the ground with a Yule log burning there. It's a gigantic thing. If you've ever been down there, it's really warm. But there's a fence about 50 feet away from the Yule log, because there's no way the Park Service is going to let you near that thing. <laughs> My friend says, we should get marshmallows and roast the marshmallows on the Yule log with a really, really big, long stick. And I said, no, we can't do that, because we'd be accused of terrorism. And the very next day, long before Mary Ellen was there, in a meeting of the DHS Privacy Committee, someone from a company argued for using anomaly as an indicator of terrorism. Jeff Jonas, my colleague on this data mining paper, said that a million, a million to one things happen a million times a day. So anomaly is probably not a good use of, of uh, data analysis, and it isn't really predictive data mining as we've been discussing. So I just want to sort of highlight that interesting difference. Fascinating.